Perfect. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction and welcome to this talk where I will present our recent results um, on scaling up WaveGuard integrated SNSPDs in order to fabricate large, large arrays that can then, for example, be used for ultra fast quantum key distribution. Uh, yes, my name is Matthias Heuss and I'm from the working group of Professor Carsten Schuck in Münster, Germany. Uh, in this talk, first, I will give you a brief introduction to a simple QKD protocol in order to motivate our choice of single photon detectors. And next, I will uh, show you how we use integrated uh, photonics to fabricate highly efficient on chip single photon detectors and how we scale the system up to 16 channels. And finally, I will present our recent results on the performance of this detector array. Okay, let me start by quickly giving you a short introduction to QKD based on an implementation of a rather simple protocol, the coherent one-way protocol, um, in order to show you why we need single photon detectors and what requirements these detectors have to fulfill. So in the coherent one-way protocol, as in all uh, pro QKD protocols, Alice and Bob uh, want to create a secret key uh, that can be used to securely exchange information. And to this end, in the first step, Alice, the sender, uh, creates bits uh, zeros and one where zero corresponds to a photon early in a time interval and one corresponds to a photon late in the time interval. In addition, Alice can also create test states uh, with an early and a late photon uh, separated by a time delta t here. And these states are now uh, sent to Bob via a telecom optical fiber channel that has an intrinsic loss eta such that only a fraction of the sent photons actually arrive at Bob's site. And at Bob's site, uh, the light is then split into and sent into two arms, uh, the upper one actually to measure the bits zero and one sent by Alice uh, to generate a secret key. And with the lower one uh, featuring an interferometer and the delay line, Bob can analyze the phase relation of two subsequent uh, photons in a test state. Um, and according to the laws of quantum mechanics, uh, this phase relation um, can uh, be used by Bob then to gather information on potential eavesdropping and so if Bob measures a uh, deviation from the expected phase relation to a certain threshold, it is likely that there has been an eavesdropper and Alice and Bob can decide not to use the generated key to exchange their valuable information. And uh, then also the eavesdropper has uh, no access to it. And now from this simple scheme, we can extract uh, requirements for the detectors on Bob's side, um, which are then also the main topic of this talk. Um, so first, uh, the detector needs to have a high timing accuracy and a short dead time. And um, since this allows them to choose a short time difference delta t, and this then enables higher bit rates and uh, with this also a higher generation rate for the secret key. Okay, uh, the detectors uh, also need to have a high detection efficiency and a low dark count rate. Um, since due to the loss in the channel already only a fraction of the photons arrive at Bob's site. And uh, dark count rate is also important since uh, with a low dark count rate, we can keep the signal to noise ratio in the channel uh, on a reasonable value. Okay, and a third option is uh, that it's beneficial if the number of detection channels um, can be increased to compensate also for the channel loss. And this can be done either by parallelizing or multiplexing, which means either by using not only one, but a high number of uh, fiber channels between Alice and Bob or using a single channel and performing wavelength multiplexing. Okay, uh, to sum it up, it can be said that the, this cow protocol benefits if Bob's detectors have a high timing accuracy, a short dead time, a low dark count rate and uh, high detection efficiency. And in addition, uh, if the system can be scaled up to several parallel channels. Okay, now uh, before introducing the WaveGuard integrated detectors, I quickly want to talk about integrated photonics, which is the basic for the SNSPD configuration uh, that we use here in this project. Um, in integrated photonics, basically large tabletop systems, optical setups and discrete components uh, are scaled down to chip sites and using nanofabrication methods and um, numerous nanophotonic devices on, on various platforms has, have been developed in the recent years. And so in this schematic, for example, you can see um, uh, basic passive building blocks like optical couplers, waveguides and filters, but also there are active building blocks like phase shifters and uh, detectors um, 
it can be combined in order to perform complex uh, optical experiments on, on a single chip here. And in this work now, uh, um, we employ the low loss silicon nitride platform and uh, use waveguides and, and splitters to set up our detector array. And with this, let me go one step further to the single photon detectors. Uh, as we've heard in the previous talk, a superconducting nanowire single photon detectors are a promising candidate to fulfill a lot of requirements of different applications, including, for example, QKD, the QKD experiment that I introduced uh, two slides before. And on top of that, uh, they can be integrated um, uh, in nanophotonic circuits, which makes them quite powerful. And here on the left side, you can see a schematic of a waveguide integrated SNSPD. Um, the nanowire, so the sensing part of the SNSPD, sits on top of the silicon uh, nitride waveguide. And if a photon is now traveling along the waveguide, it uh, is evanescently coupled to the detector and the detector then is uh, partially uh, brought into the normal conducting state. And this can then in the end be uh, sensed with uh, a suitable readout scheme. Uh, this, absorption can, this absorption of the photon can also be simulated using FEM simulations, as you can see here on the right side. And um, since the detector length uh, can be chosen rather short, compared to front side illuminated SNSPDs, we can achieve recovered times in the end of below one nanosecond. Um, however, uh, to detect the light coming from a telecom fiber, the light first uh, has to be coupled onto the chip and into uh, the waveguide. Okay, for this, um, we use highly efficient broadband 3D printed polymeric couplers. Um, these couplers have, fabricate, have been fabricated with transmission losses of below 2 dB in a broad spectral range, uh, which makes them ideal uh, for our application here too. And the type shown here is mechanically very stable and suitable for operation under cryogenic conditions. Um, and this is necessary since we want to operate it together with the SNSPDs on a single chip. Um, this type here is based on total internal reflection which you can see here in this simulation on the right side. So the light coming from a fiber is focused and then guided by a total internal reflection at a dedicated surface um, into a taper section attached to the waveguide here. Okay, now that we have both uh, the couplers and the detectors, uh, we can combine them on a single chip. And on the bottom, you can see uh, a microscope image of a detector, including uh, gold electrodes for electrical access. Um, and it is connected via a waveguide and a splitter um, to a 3D printed uh, coupler here on the right side. And this configuration is then a single building block of our final multi-channel sensing device. However, in between the, the, in between the coupler and the detector, uh, we not only can place waveguide splitter, waveguides and splitters, but we can also place arbitrary photonic devices for guiding, splitting, and manipulating uh, single photons, which, which makes this configuration here extremely versatile. Okay, um, in order now to scale up to more channels, uh, first we fabricate and characterize matrices of these couplers um, in order also to evaluate the performance, reproducibility, and alignment tolerance. And um, on the left side, you can see an SEM picture of a four by four matrix of couplers um, where each two neighboring devices are connected via a waveguide to make up in the end eight calibration structures that can be used to characterize the single couplers by sending light into the first and collecting the light from the second one. Okay, on the top right, uh, you can see um, you can see a matrix showing measured intercoupler distances compared to the ideal intercoupler distances. And we find a mean deviation here of two micrometers. And next to the matrix, uh, you can see the coupling efficiency versus the precision of the fiber array uh, to the coupler. And here we have a minus, here we see the minus plus minus five micrometer deviation from the opti optimal position uh, comes with a minus 1.5 dB reduction uh, in the coupling efficiency. So the two micrometer placement accuracy uh, can be compensated to a certain amount by the alignment tolerance. And in the last graph here, uh, we show a 3.5 dB mean transmission loss, including standard deviation um, over a wavelength range from 480 to 600 and 
40 um, nanometers. And we believe uh, 1640 nanometers. We believe that with further optimization of this structure, uh, the mean transmission loss can be reduced to uh, below uh, 3 dB also. Okay, um, with these results, uh, we can fabricate our first chip with 16 wavefield integrated SNSPDs attached to a 4x4 four four, uh, attached to a 4x4 four four matrix of 3D printed couplers. Um, on the left, you can see now a MaxCube image of the center of the chip. And we fabricate in total 70 detectors on one chip and characterize them at room temperature before routing uh, the waveguides to the detectors with the most similar resistance. Um, and the fabrication is divided into four steps. Uh, in the first electron beam, the fabricated step, the contact pads um, for electrical access of the detectors are fabricated, uh, which you can see in orange on the edges of the picture. picture. And in a second EBL step, the nanowires attached to the gold pads um, are fabricated. Um, in the last EBL step, we fabricate the waveguides that can be seen as dark lines here. Um, finally, uh, the 16 3D printed polymer couplers are fabricated that can be seen as brown spots here attached to the waveguides and they are printed using direct laser writing. And the spacing of the couplers is 500 micrometers and matches the pitch of the 4x4 2D fiber array um, employed for optical access. And the picture here on the right uh, side shows the chip mounted on a PCB here and on top of the chip, you can see the fiber array, which is fixed uh, at the optimal position with uh, cryogenic epoxy. Okay, now let's come to the characterization of the array at cryogenic temperatures. Uh, first, uh, first uh, we characterize the efficiency of our detectors. Uh, our setup consists of a CW laser, a fiber polarization controller, and an attenuator uh, to attenuate the laser signal to the signal photon level. And in order to calibrate the photon flux onto the detector, uh, we split the signal and uh, place a photodiode in one arm and use it as a reference. And then we set the photon flux to a fixed value and increase the bias current of our SNSPDs while monitoring the count rate, what you can see on the lower left picture here. And with increasing bias current, the detector becomes more sensitive to incoming photons and the count rate in red here increases. In addition, also the dark count rate increases. And um, um, in this case here, the optimal operating point of this detector would be around 5.5 microamps, um, where the count rate is nearly at the maximum, while the dark count rate is still below 100 hertz. And overall, 11 of the 16 detectors showed reasonable performance, which you can see here on the right side where the detection efficiency is plotted versus, again, the bias current of the detector, of the detectors. And the best device shows a system detection efficiency of 50% uh, at 2.7 Kelvin, Kelvin with a dark count rate below uh, 100 Hertz. Okay, in addition to the efficiency, we also characterize the timing accuracy of our detectors. Um, for this, we switch our CW laser for a pulsed laser with a synchronization output port. And in order to now measure the timing accuracy. Uh, we measure the time difference between the pulse sent by the laser and the response signal of the SNSPD. And if we repeatedly measure this time difference and plot the result in the histogram, we find that the detector response um, varies with a Gaussian distribution around a mean value. And the full width at half maximum of this histogram is the timing accuracy of the chitter of or the chitter of our detectors now. And on the right side, we plot the chitter for the individual detectors of the array at different bias currents um, of the detector. And we find that the chitter decreases with the bias current, which is due to the low bias currents around five microamps and the low signal to noise ratio that we have in our readout circuit. But it also implies that uh, the electronic chitter contributes most to the overall system chitter here. And however, nevertheless, we find chitter values down to 100 picoseconds. However, also for waveguide integrated SNSPDs, chitter values down to 20 picoseconds have been, have been found. And to tackle this problem, uh, we will in the future improve our readout circuit with cryogenic amplifiers, um, which we believe will reduce the chitter by a factor of at least two. 
Okay, now that we have talked about the efficient efficiency and the chitter, I would like to finally discuss the maximum count rate. And uh, the maximum count rate is basically limited by the reset time of the non-wire. And however, also the readout circuit, including the amplifier strongly influences the maximum count rate. And on the left side, you can see, for example, a voltage spike generated by the system if a single photon is absorbed. And on the right side, you can now see how the detection efficiency over the bias current changes with the number of incoming photons. Um, if the average photon flux is onto the detector is increased from one to 10 megahertz, we find a slight reduction in the detection efficiency with a final value still at uh, 46%. Okay, and then let me summarize the work that I just presented to you. Um, we've simulated and fabricated highly efficient and broadband optical couplers and waveguide integrated SNSPDs. And we fabricated also a matrix of waveguide integrated SNSPDs interfaced with telecom fibers. And uh, we characterized this matrix and found a maximum detection efficiency of close to 50% at, at 10 megahertz count rate and a dark count rate below 100 hertz and the chitter uh, down to 100 picoseconds. And for the cow protocol, this uh, chitter value now means that Alice can send her bits into the fiber channel with a rate of up to a, a few gigabits per second. And the maximum raw bit rate is limited by the maximum count rate of the detector to 10 megabits per second per channel. And due to the low dark count rate at this, um, the system in general is also interesting for QKD over large distances. Um, we are now working towards a 64 channel device uh, featuring an improved readout scheme with cryogenic amplifiers. And with this uh, device allowing for multi channel parallel single photon detection, we then want to implement the COW protocol to perform ultra fast quantum key distribution experiments. And uh, with this, I would like to thank all the people that contributed to this work, especially the guys from the groups of Carsten Schuck and Wolfram Panis in Münster involved in the nanofabrication of the detector chip, but also all the other participants in this QPED project, namely the guys from PicoGran providing the real electronics and entropy and uh, dev circuits for the cryogenic uh, equipment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Matthias. Uh, Thank you very much. Very nice talk. I have a lot of questions myself, but let's first give the chance to the audience.